I am here today to talk about how a router, Norway's largest transport authority, is creating a new digital platform for uh, improving their customer services and also to get better control of their data. So the agenda today is uh, we'll explain a little bit about what router is and what they do. Um, how they're engaged in the, the ITXPT project, which uh, tries to create a new European standards for uh, information technology and public transport. Uh, so this uh, relates to uh, TAS, or Transport as a Service, which is the team I'm working in at uh, Router. So Apache Kafka is the main uh, <coughs> technology and the core uh, system we're using. And I will try to explain uh, what about Kafka uh, that makes it obvious that it's the best choice for us. So Ruter is the largest public transport authority in Norway. They serve about 317 million passengers last year, and they're based in Oslo and serves the surrounding, so it's about one and a half million people in there. Ruter is owned by uh, the county of, of Oslo and Akershus, so it's a public company. So they get, get money from the public. So, are any of you any users of public transport, or anybody not using public transport? I guess this is something that most of us uh, tend to use almost every day. So, what, uh, what do you think about it? Are you fans? Do you like your public transport services? Yeah, some, uh, you like it? Good. Uh, well, sometimes it uh, tends to not to be good as well. <coughs> you have to uh, uh, find out where to enter the bus or the vehicle. You have to stay in uh, hot and noisy places. And it's kind of somebody else who de defines the schedule. You can, if you're uh, a bit strict, you can say that public transport is the opposite of uh, freedom. Uh, freedom of movement is one of the key human rights. Liberty to travel anywhere you, that you please without impending the liberty of others, of course. And the ultimate embodiment of this used to be to own a car. Uh, when you own a car, you can drive wherever you want, when, whenever. And public transport is uh, just the opposite of this. However, uh, nowadays, owning a car, driving to work or to school or wherever you want to go, more and more, looks like this picture, you're in a traffic jam. You don't know where to park and it's a large costs. And it's a big hassle. So car ownership again turns into something resembling the opposite of freedom. Uh, Ruter, along with several other public transport companies, are working towards a vision of something they call mobility as a service, which again will turn uh, public transport into something that is inducing, inducing freedom. So mobility as a service is an extended version where you not only have the regular buses and trams and trains, but you add, add in rental cars, you add in bicycles, taxis, all kinds of transport. And they're all combined in the same digital platform. And they're accessible in your smartphone. And that makes it very easy to just tap into a solution, tap into an app, select where you want to go. Of course, you have to, might have to walk a little bit. That's very good for you. But uh, the idea is that you have a very immediate solution to uh, create a road from A to B. Oh, sorry. Transport as a service, which I'm talking about, 
I will soon get to these pictures. <laughs> it's a subset of mobility as a service. So transport as a service is something that will be an enabler for a mobility as a service platform, where we have an ability to gather all kinds of transport uh, means. And now, to illustrate why this is necessary, I want to tell you a little story from my life. And here comes the dog. So this is my dog. He, his name is Milo. He's a Japanese Spitz. He's a, he's a puppy of five months. <coughs> and he, uh, he needs to, to be taken out in the middle of the day. And, and this uh, somebody is uh, quite often me who takes him out. So luckily I, I work and live in the center of Oslo, so it's possible to take um, public transport to get uh, home and back again. And when I do that, I try to do it in uh, just one hour, so I can just use one ticket. Because I live uh, so close that I, I, I would rather walk, but I don't want to be away too much at the middle of the day from work. Sorry. So this is where a map of the center of Oslo. The typewriter is where I uh, sit and type code, and the picture of the dog is where me and my dog lives. And the green and white lines, those are two different tram lines. So when I want to go home, I can take any of these. And I want to figure out which one is the fastest and can take me home the first. So this is a screenshot from the router app. Uh, which shows uh, the, the planned timetables from uh, my work and, uh, and to home. You see there are three different trams I can take. Tram number 11, 18 or 19. And the departure times, it's at 12, 13, 12, 10 and 12, 14. Unfortunately, this is not real-time data. So what is says there, this is kind of in the middle of the day, this is not correct. The, the trams will be delayed. Luckily, there's another screen in this app where you can look up the estimated departure times. This shows the list of uh, all lines trafficking a stop. And the one I would take is uh, number 11 to Majorstun. And it says that it, is, it will be at the stop in one minute. So we can... Uh, so it says it's, it's five minutes till number 11 is there, and this one says one, so you can see there's a di big difference. And once I go to the actual uh, stop, the tram is already there. At the stop place, there are also signs that show uh, information. And these signs are even more uh, accurate than the uh, app, but still they are inaccurate. In my example, it was just one minute off, but very often it's a lot more. So it's a lot of misleading information. The current situation in Router is that the trip planning apps, they don't use real-time data. We have some real-time data, supposed to be real-time in the departure times. The physical signs uh, have even better real-time data, but still wrong. And uh, it makes the dog walks too short. It's a big problem. So what, has, uh, what is the reason for this? What has happened? The reason is that Router does not own the data. They don't own the, the buses. Router is a, an authority. They hire others to, to run their services. And they cannot directly access data from the vehicles. The real-time data we have available is coming from a third party which is Entur, which is the national body that collects all public transport information. So the problem is that the operators control all the vehicles and the data at the same time. So now we'll have to explain to you the difference between a, a PTA and a PTO in the public transport uh, language. A PTA, such as Router, is the one who's responsible towards the public and towards the government for public transport in an area. They create all the timetables, they do marketing, like create apps and uh, websites, and they order services from the PTO. 
The PTO are the ones that actually own, own the, the vehicles and they hire the drivers. So this is a map showing, uh, this is from the ITXPT website. I don't want to go into detail on this, which it just shows that uh, you have um, the various uh, colored uh, areas. Those are, are representative of a geographic area. And a PTA often has one area, while a PTO, the operators with the vehicles, they can have several, and they can work for several PTAs. So it's a man-to-man -man relationship here. And uh, as I said, normally the operators sit on the data, and there's not much exchange. So Ruter naturally wanted to fix the situation with uh, missing data. So in 2016, they started the project with collecting automatic passenger counts or APC data. These are sensors that sit uh, uh, right beside the doors inside of the buses and they can count how many are entering a bus and how many are exiting. Some of them can see the difference between a child and adult. Some of them can see if there's a wheelchair or a bicycle. They're installing 400 buses now. So what happened is that there were three different, or actually several different vendors that uh, created these systems. And we have a situation where all vendors chose their own way of implementing in this. They have their own data formats and their own way of doing it. So like uh, Nobina, for instance, they want to have data sent to their backend and from there into router. Uh, and, uh, uh, some of them wanted to push data using a REST service. Some of them are pushing data to MQTT. And the data format is, of course, very different from every one of them. And on some, uh, they're counting from starting from the beginning and just adding up till you're, till you're at the end. So, uh, the, yeah, there's just different meanings the, for the data. Since nothing has been uh, predefined, they can just figure out or do whatever they want. So as you understand, their need for uh, standardization is there. And uh, this answer is the ITEX PT project, Information Technology for Public Transport. This is a European uh, initiative. They're trying to create a so-called plug and play system for information technology for public transport. Uh, they're actually having a big meeting today in Paris where they're discussing uh, how they sh should proceed. These are some of the members of uh, it for pt I don't know if you can see any Germans in there, but there, there's a mixture of public transport operators, authorities, and people creating the uh, so, uh, technical solutions, all who have an interest in how the standard should be, are, are taking part. And there are very active discussions. There are 13 working groups who all have uh, their say in various parts of the uh, standard. IT4PT has created four standard documents of which the uh, installation requirements is talking about uh, how the, the electrical currents should be inside of the bus. It's, it's nothing that we uh, care about. The onboard architecture is about what kind of components a bus should have. Uh, it should be passenger counting, GPS, and so on. I will go into it later. Uh, the back office architecture is what happens on the back of, in the back office side. That means how we handle traffic from the bus and how we handle the, the timetable plans. The over-the-air ar architecture is about how to bridge data from buses to back office. So it's about the data transport. Okay, and this was a little bit snap, but uh, this is the, uh, a picture of the situation before ITXPT. A bus has uh, several components. In this picture, each of them has their own network connection. And they all communicate with each other using probably wires from one box to another, or if there's a net network, I don't know. And the driver screen is four different displays from four different boxes. 
So with ITXPT, you get a much cleaner picture. There's one network connection. All the components talk together in one, uh, in one network. So some of the components inside of this uh, is the display information. It's the advanced vehicle monitoring system. This is the one that keeps track of the, how the bus is progressing on its journey. Uh, there's the APC, which I mentioned, the automatic passenger counts, the GPS, that is the one that uh, keeps track of the location. And the MIDT is the driver terminal. So the DPI module is the one that's responsible for uh, creating information to the passengers. So you can see on the left hand side, there's a box uh, front side display. This one is, has to be very visible, so they are very limited in what you really can do. And on the right hand side, we saw, see some of the displays that we have been created in the router project. We will see this clearer later on. So the AVMS, the Advanced Vehicle Monitoring System, is the one that uh, keeps track of the progress and it informs the displays with uh, information. Back office, uh, several standards. Netix is, is for planned data. This is the thing that the router is doing when they're figuring out where should the routes go, how many buses do we need here and there. Then it's a Netix data. Siri data. That's the real-time data, which is continuously updated as, uh, when the bus uh, is driving. I say bus, but it's also tram and whatever. And the uh, over-the-air specification talks about uh, how communication between vehicle and back office should be handled. This specification talks about using an MQTT bridge, which practically uh, makes it possible to have all information from the bus mirrored into the back office. And also, you can mirror, uh, send the information from the back office into the bus. So transport as a service is the router's way of doing uh, ITXPT. The concrete background between us uh, creating this project was that the router ha has to deliver uh, has to get 400 new buses available in 2019. And they created a, a tender with specifications based upon ITXPT, where they specified how they wanted the traffic to be between the buses and the back office. And this was created by some people in my team. Uh, based upon ITXPT, we, of course, we and router has a policy to prefer open source components wherever possible. And the reason is that they don't want to be tied up to one vendor. One assumption that router makes on the ITXPT standard is that all vehicles are always online. This has the implication that we can always communicate with the bus and update the information inside the bus. In the ITXPT <coughs> standard, there are several. Um, it's a it's a standard in uh, development, so there are several different ways to do it. Normally, uh, or in the old style of uh, doing public transport, you have the AVMS system loaded with data when the bus starts, and it keeps track of progress as it as it goes, reads it, its progress from the odometer which just uh, counts how many meters the bus has driven and figures out how, how bad it is at the route from this. So what we do in the router is to, since we are always online, we don't have to have an IVMS inside of the bus. We uh, pick out the IVMS and do all the processing in the back office, which of course has some advantages. This means we can do machine learning. We can figure out how long does the delay used to be on, on this uh, point. 
at this point of uh, the road at, at this uh, time. And we are very, very flexible with how we create uh, the information and also how we create the displays. So this, of course, makes for a continuously stream of updated data back into the vehicles. And it also makes it easier to handle unexpected changes. So this is a schema of the main data interactions in the transport as a service. So see, starting from the bus, you have uh, some interactions with the streaming platform. We're passing on the uh, location, the passenger counts, and the sign-on messages. And there's some information that is uh, created, handed on to the operator. The uh, operators, of course, have their own interests in, uh, in data from the bus. This is not something that uh, I'm talking about, but uh, an operator would probably have a whole different story about how this data is running. The operator is responsible for the driver, so he has to take sure, make sure that the driver has the correct information. While at Router, we, uh, are, uh, we care about the passengers, so we must provide information to the passenger. So what happens when a driver signs into a bus? He uh, passes on to the streaming platform what journey he is on. And we combine the data from our planning system, the TPS, at the bottom of the picture. Uh, so we can figure out what route is on and can, con can uh, monitor the journey. So the uh, interaction between the operators and the authorities are happening because uh, we know how the a list of uh, service journeys are are uh, created to have the complete route for a bus for one day, and this makes it possible to know in advance if a bus is delayed on one line, it will be delayed also on the next. So the streaming platform at the middle of the picture is Apache Kafka. So Kafka, as you may have heard about, have some properties that make it very suitable for real-time processing. So this is something I copied from the website, which you probably have heard uh, many times before. But we use Kafka to pro uh, we use uh, producers pushing in data to Kafka, and, and we have. Uh, uh, stream processors modifying the data inside, and we have several consumers. And we, we use a lot of stream processing to uh, enrich data coming in. I will more about this later. So the traffic plan system is where we uh, keep track of, it's, it's our master database for all the, the journeys. So this is something that uh, actually, if all vehicles were on time, we wouldn't need anything other than this. This contains the planned timetables, and it is the same as the thing I showed you at the beginning, which says that the uh, tram is departing at 12.10 and so on. Unfortunately, delays happen all the time. It's a fact of life. TPS is available in a GraphQL uh, interface, which is very nice to explore the data. This is a NetX model, and it's extremely complicated. It has uh, it's a little, this is a schema of some of the structures. So what we do is to, to make it easy for ourselves, we publish data from TPS into Kafka using a batch job. Every night that publishes all the, all the journeys that we are supposed to run on the current day. So we set these uh, topics with the cleanup policy compact, so we can just keep the latest item. It's easy to manage as a table.
So let's have a look at uh, some how the data flows inside of the, this system. This is, this is our demo bus. We actually have a physical bus that we have installed all the components. Um, it's made for our uses, so it has just uh, the things we need. So let's pretend to be on board the uh, TAS bus. And the first thing you have to do is to sign on to a vehicle. We publish a sign-on message to the uh, MQTT topic, passing on the uh, number of the vehicle and the journey ID for the vehicle. And this is my colleague, Per Ube, doing a sign-on. So see, he's, he's holding an iPad or something, um, which uh, is of perhaps not exactly what the driver will use, but uh, this is uh, our demo, and we have all made all uh, things as a web service. And it's very easily configurable with uh, screens uh, getting their information from um, Android things using Raspberry Pis, which makes the whole system e very easily reconfigurable. <coughs> And this, uh, this way of doing the digital uh, dynamic passenger information is something that we are bringing into IETXBT to try to make them uh, work towards a system that is very dynamic and not locked up to, to old ways of doing things. So the, <coughs> the sign-on message must be matched towards uh, the service journey from TPS. So this is a little dump from uh, that system where I just have highlighted the uh, ID. Combining sign-on with service journey happens in a Kafka stream application. We're using a global K table for the service journeys. Since the uh, key for the sign-on would be a vehicle and the key for the global the service journeys uh, don't have any information on, on the vehicles. So what's interesting now is when we get a GPS signal. This contains a lot of information, also the speed and so on. Joining these together, uh, we can figure out the location of the bus on the journey on the next stop. And combining this with the departure times, we can make estimates. These are some of the uh, images inside of the bus, some of the displays. So for a company like Ruter who cares about the passenger uh, welfare and the passenger satisfaction, it's very important to have a full control of the uh, displays. And this is something that we have created in, in our system. So as you can see, the uh, ITX PT standard combined with Kafka enables real-time data processing for public transport and makes it possible to get uh, a better estimate of uh, the uh, times something is supposed to be there. And more, more importantly, using Kafka, we are ready to handle any kind of producers. So since we now have uh, only our own system to uh, get data from, uh, it works for uh, router, but we can easily extend this to several other producers. It can be uh, small companies just publishing their service journeys into Kafka. And we could uh, get the GPS sig signal from other sources as well and just do the same for other. So we are ready to handle the mobility as a service. The platform is ready. The only thing that's lacking is everything else. So we have decoupled data from uh, the producer. So the conclusion is that uh, mobility as a service improves animal welfare. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Any questions?
Uh, hi. Um, the data that you are using to like um, sending between the uh, central systems and the buses, and uh, is this data also available for third parties? Could you yes. plug an application into it and like do something with it? Yes. <coughs> Most of the data is accessible to public uh, parties. Um, this is the uh, EMTUR, which I briefly mentioned, the global, the national uh, company, which uh, keeps um, all the information for public transport companies. I guess you have something similar in Germany as well. Uh, so they have all information except for the blocks. The blocks is the list of service journeys, and uh, the list of journeys, uh, and that is very tightly coupled with the uh, vehicles. And this is not something that the public is uh, interested in. But it could be, like if you want to create very good estimates, you could use this information uh, as well. Uh, but then it's very hard to know. You, you, you wouldn't get information on what vehicle runs, what journey, um, perhaps. Well, at least yeah, this data is something that may be available in the future too. Mm. Yes. Uh, about the uh, the equipments and the buses, um, what's who codes like? What's the code running on that? Like, uh, what languages and who 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 programs them? So uh, they are programmed by uh, different vendors. So this is kind of not something I uh, have uh, control over. Uh, so it, it can be anything. Cool. Mm -hmm. I also have another question. Uh, in terms of um, changes in the schedule, for example, there's a construction work in a big avenue or something. How does the um, the communication back to the operators uh, of like you know uh, detours or other spot or the uh, stops that the bus have to make? Mm -hmm. How does the communication work backwards? Is it all automated as well, or is is something manual that you know people have to adapt to? The uh, information about the tours is also something that will be automated. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, uh, we also have a possibility to send manual messages to uh, drivers. So this is something that is, who is responsible for this? Is the uh, the operator or the authority? Uh, it depends, but sometimes you just have to, the, the way that it works today is that uh, sometimes they just cr draw on a map uh, on a Google map or something and to create a new route and send it to the uh, drivers by email. But of course this will be uh, automated uh, sometime, but it's it probably not the first thing. Yes, any questions more? Sorry. Hi. Um, when you're dealing with always online, do you then care about the event time you're sending or do you process on a ingestion time? Very good question, thank you. The, uh, in the contract uh, with the operators, we demand that data should be no more than, I think, two seconds delayed or something. So it has to be, uh, it, this is something that's defined in the contract. So uh, the, we have to, what, what we do is, we, uh, in practice, this of course doesn't happen. Uh, events are delayed sometimes with several minutes. So we, uh, in the back, back office, we match, match back uh, with the correct uh, location. We match, the, we match the passenger counts back to the correct GPS location. Mm. Yes? At least with our local transport systems, you learn fast which lines and transport options are unreliable, you know, as an individual, you know, yes. that bus sucks. So you will know that from your data as well, won't mm -hmm. you? Will you be sharing that? So if you say, I want a connection from here to there, so don't, don't go that one because you'll probably miss it. <laughs> and do you plan to be honest, basically? <laughs> um. Well, that's interesting. I don't think we would share this. Ad, so, uh, please avoid this bus or this uh, driver, but... Uh, uh, More this bus at this time of day. Yeah. Um, the answer is that we will, of course, use this information uh, to uh, improve the services. 
And uh, there will, I don't think there will be a blame site where you can go and see what, where to, uh, when and where to avoid uh, certain stop services now. Okay, thanks. But it's a good idea. Okay, if there's no more questions, then thank you all for coming and thank you, Christopher. Thanks.